What is Web GPU? How is it different than WebGL? And how does it link with AI? We are going to answer all these questions in this video. So let's get started. The first thing that we will discuss is what is WebGL, what are the limitations of WebGL and where does WebGPU come in and solve these limitations. We are also going to discuss where WebGL and WebGPU stand in terms of general purpose compute and machine learning. What is WebGL? WebGL is a JavaScript framework to render 2D and 3D graphics on your browser. Released in 2011, almost all the graphics on the web browser has been handled by WebGL. All the major rendering frameworks including Babylon.js, 3.js, Box2D, LiquidFun, P5.js, A-Frame, all of these web-based rendering frameworks are written on top of WebGL. If you are playing a game on your web browser built using Unreal Engine or Unity or Godot, there is a high probability that it uses WebGL under the hood. So to summarize, up till now, rendering on the web was equal to WebGL. What are the limitations of WebGL? The latest version of WebGL, which is WebGL 2.0, is based on OpenGL ES 3.0. OpenGL 3.0 itself came out in 2008. So basically, the capabilities of WebGL are based on a graphics API that is from 2008. That's already 15 years behind. Do you know which NVIDIA GPU was released in 2008? It was the GeForce 200 series. After that, we had 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800. 10 series, 20 series, 30 series and now 40 series as well. Since the past 15 years, there has been a huge development in graphics card. On the same lines, in order to support all these new graphics card, we had graphics APIs like DirectX, Vulkan and Metal. So using these modern graphics APIs as well as the new graphics card, there has been a huge jump in the visual quality and performance of desktop and mobile games. But the browser games are still using WebGL which is still using OpenGL3. So you can imagine how behind is the web-based rendering if you compare that with mobile or desktop-based rendering. On web browsers, we are still limited by performance issues and frame rate. Even today, we cannot run high-performance games on web browsers. And since WebGL still uses OpenGL 3.0, there are many functionalities of the new graphics card which we are not able to use in browser-based 3D apps. And all these limitations bring us to our next question, that is, what is WebGPU? So WebGPU is the successor to WebGL. Its development started in 2017. WebGPU basically aims to solve all the problems that I mentioned. WebGPU enables the web browser to use the latest graphics card feature. WebGL under the hood uses OpenGL. And WebGPU underneath calls graphics APIs like DirectX, Vulkan and Metal based on the platform that the browser is running on. So yesterday at their conference, Google announced that WebGPU would be supported on Chrome. If you want to try out WebGPU, you can just download the latest version of Chrome and press the link in the description. And you should see a WebGPU app running on your browser. So before we dive into the differences of WebGPU and WebGL, let's compare OpenGL and Vulkan. So why are we comparing OpenGL and Vulkan? Because WebGL is based on OpenGL and WebGPU under the hood uses Vulkan as one of its rendering API. So it would make sense to compare OpenGL and Vulkan because WebGL and WebGPU would essentially inherit the behaviors of OpenGL and Vulkan. So let's have a look at this chart. So OpenGL is a higher level API with automatic resource management. Vulkan is a lower level API. What I mean by that is Vulkan is closer to the graphics card. There is less overhead. OpenGL does not explicitly have command buffers. Vulkan does have command buffers. The memory management inside OpenGL is done by the driver. The memory management inside Vulkan is the developer's job. Because the driver has to do a lot of work on OpenGL side, there is some driver overhead on OpenGL. There is lower overhead on Vulkan because of reduced driver involvement. And since the level of granularity, the level of control that we have on Vulkan is higher, there is always a higher potential for performance optimization on Vulkan. The debugging on Vulkan is easier because there are extensive tools and support for debugging and profiling on Vulkan as compared to OpenGL. These are the major differences between OpenGL and Vulkan. Vulkan is slightly lower level, closer to the graphics card. It has better support, better granularity, support for command buffers. OpenGL doesn't have all that, right? All this behavior is inherited in WebGL and WebGPU. So now let's compare WebGL and WebGPU. Uh, in WebGL, the driver handles memory management, as we already mentioned. In WebGPU, the developer can manage the memory. In WebGPU, we support render bundles, which is similar to command buffers. In WebGL, there is no command buffer support. WebGL is a global state. Because OpenGL in itself is a global state machine, WebGL is also a global state machine. But WebGPU is more like a stateless API. Inside WebGPU, for each pass, for each render call, you can write descriptors. And that's why it's not a global state. WebGL shaders are written in GLSL, which is again OpenGL shading language. And WebGPU shaders are written in WGSL, which is 
web gpu shading language web gpu exposes more features almost all the features that are there in vulkan directx or metal which are the latest graphics apis you can access that through web gpu you can do a lot of performance optimizations using web gpu your apps can run faster basically web gpu is an upgraded version of web gl now let's take a look at a few examples of web gpu so in order to run all these web gpu samples i had to download the latest version of chrome and what i observed is whenever you are running a web gpu demo and you are comparing that with a web gl demo the web gpu demo runs way way faster than the web gl demo and because the web gpu runs faster and uses the graphics card more efficiently and at a more granular level there is a lot of compute bandwidth remaining on the graphics card as well and so you can use this bandwidth for implementing more advanced rendering features now let's talk about web gl and web gpu in terms of general purpose compute and machine learning TensorFlow JS which is a machine learning framework that allows you to run machine learning models on the browser and use your GPU under the hood it uses webgl what happens in tensorflow js is whenever you input some data or you want to perform any kind of computation using tensorflow js tensorflow js internally converts that tensor data into some kind of vertex data or texture data and then performs some vertex shader or fragment shader based computation on that data and then the output of that data is again converted to tensors so there is a lot of conversion and overhead involved when you are using webgl for any kind of general purpose computation but now web gpu supports compute shaders compute shaders are general purpose program that you can run on the gpu tensorflow js would eventually start using web gpu which under the hood will use these compute shaders now what does that mean when tensorflow js is directly able to use compute shaders under the hood there's no need of converting your input data to some kind of vertex or texture data there's also no need to fit your data into that rendering paradigm which is the vertex shader fragment shader paradigm you can directly input your tensor data to web gpu you can perform the computations and you can get the output in a straight forward manner without any kind of conversion and overhead involved what does that mean for machine learning since the overhead to run these computations on your web browser using your gpu is reduced it would be easier for developers to deploy all kinds of ml models on the client side let's look at a few examples that demonstrate the difference between using webgl and web gpu for general purpose compute here is a generative ai model that generates the image using web gpu and web gl the time required to generate the image using web gpu is 3x faster than web gl similarly there would be lot of use cases where you would deploy your models on your browsers and use the client gpu to perform any kind of computations here are a few examples So now since the client browser has the power to use the client GPU directly many companies will eventually try to offload some of their compute to the client side at this moment the cost of running chat gpt per day is 100k us dollars now imagine if open ai is able to offload some of that compute to the user device actually there are multiple benefits of being able to deploy your machine learning models on the web browser and using the user's gpu for it the first benefit is privacy since you are not sending any kind of user data to the server and you are performing all the computations on the device there is lot of privacy for the user even if the device goes offline after downloading the ml model you can always perform the computations offline because now you are using the client gpu since there is no cloud involved and the computations are on the client device the latency would be a lot lower the one of the most important points is the cost since you are not using any kind of aws or google servers to run your machine learning models the cost of running the model is zero for the company Of course there are limitations to the amount of compute that you can offload to the client device but I think that is eventually going to increase as the users would have more and more powerful devices as the time goes on. Let's talk about the future possibilities. Since web gpu is more powerful than web gl, more and more 3d rendering and machine learning frameworks will start moving towards web gpu. Web gpu actually has the potential to revolutionize the browser based compute and the browser based gaming. So as more and more apps and frameworks start using web gpu we would eventually see machine learning models that are deployed on the web features like advanced rendering improved performance and faster load times would be some of the things that would happen after people start using web gpu what are your thoughts on this let me know in the comments if you like this video and learn something new from it do hit the subscribe button till then take care have a nice day bye bye